Do you want to see how you can control a stepper motor remotely using Wi-Fi from your cell phone? All the details after the short intro. Hi, welcome back to my Reham radio channel. I'm building a magnetic loop antenna and to tune the magnetic loop antenna, I need to control some variable capacitor. In my case, it's an air variable capacitor. And I wanted to find a solution that I can control that capacitor remotely. It means that I will be in my station and the capacitor that located outside in the, uh, in, the, in the antenna will be controlled remotely. And I wanted to do that using a Wi-Fi. It means that I can control the tuning using my um, cell phone or the computer. To control the capacitor, I understand that I need to use a stepper motor. And the reason is that a stepper motor can be controlled to move step by step. And this is exactly what I need to tune my antenna because I need sometimes steps and from time to time I need micro steps from, for uh, fine tuning. To control that um, uh, stepper motor remotely, I'm using a tiny microcontroller called the ESP8266. It's a smart one, tiny one, um, that have um, lots of features. Um, it has a, a digital and analog ports. And one of the great features that they're going to use is uh, that it has its own Wi-Fi unit on it. In addition, the option that this controller will be able to control the stepper motor, I need some driver for the motor. And for that, I use this tiny driver motor it's called the DRV8825. And the reason that I chose this one is because it's also a smart one that can control uh, not even by steps, but even by micro steps. It can get the commands from the controller and translate the right commands to control the uh, mot stepper motor itself. Um, let me show you uh, um, uh, the diagram, how everything is connected and we will see how that unit work. Okay, so let's review this diagram. On the left side, this is the microcontroller, the ESP8266, that gets its power from this power supply, around 5 volt, using the red and the black line here. D1, D2, and D3 are digital ports that are controlling the driver motor. D1, the yellow one, is controlling the direction pin. It means that each time there's a power here, the motor will move to one direction and without power, it will move to the other direction. D2, the green one, is controlling the step pin. It means that each time there's a power here, the motor will move one step. And D3, the blue one, is controlling the enable pin. It means that we can control if this unit will be enabled or disabled. The idea behind it is that when the stepper motor itself is not in use, we want that this unit will not be in use as well to save heat on this unit. The unit itself getting the power from here, the power supply, I'm using 12 volt, but it can use from 8 to 45 volt. And note to the capacitor, the 100 microfarad 50 volt, it's a very important one to save us from spikes. And lastly, the stepper motor has four lines, two for each coil. And when you are connecting your motor to this unit, just make sure that you are connecting each call to the right ports. For example, the first call, A, is connecting to A1 and A2 here. And the second call, the red one, connecting to B1 and B2. I will provide a link to this diagram in the description of this video. Now, after we saw the diagram, let's see the system in real life. This is the ESP8266, that's the microcontroller, and this is the DRV8825, that's the driver motor. The power is coming from these lines, and this is t uh, 12 volt that's coming from a battery, but of course you can use the power supply. And you can see that the 12 volts going directly to the driver motor. In parallel, I'm taking the same 12 volt using this line, and I'm using this tiny regulator to provide 5 volt to the uh, microcontroller that tiny piece converting the 12 volt into 5 volt. 
the main logic is coming from these three pins, the direction pin, the step pin, and the enable pin. We saw that on the diagram. These color lines controlling the stepper motor. You can see these dip switches on the expansion board that these are M0, M1, and M2 that can control uh, the steps of the stepper motor from standard step and up to one to 30 second steps. Now I can show you that the application itself can control the motor and the capacitor. I have the scan option. Now let's take it for tune. Tune it means that it's doing some uh, set amount of steps in that direction and the other one going to the other direction. We can also see that we have a fine tuning. It means that it's taking very slow steps and I can even go step by step for fine tuning. One more interesting thing to see is about the power and the current. You see that when nothing in use here, the current is zero. If I will try to tune, you can see that we have 0 0.4 ampere. When I'm stopping, it's going back to zero. Let's turn it again. You can see that we have current is running there. When I stop, it's stopping as well. Thanks to that is we are saving power and making sure that when the stepper motor is not in use, the driver unit is going off and we're saving heat on the heatsink. That's thanks to the enable pin that we can control from here. Now, after we reviewed the diagram and saw the system, we need to talk about the code. The code is a set of commands that need to be loaded into the controller. So that controller will be able to translate the commands that coming from the application itself. And it will translate all of that to commands that will go to the stepper motor. So let's review how that code built. So before we are reviewing the code, I just want to mention that a link to this GitHub repository uh, will be provided in the description of this uh, video. Uh, you can review your own, the code on your own time, but the most important things to see is, for example, here we declare uh, the enable pin, step pin, and direction pin that we just saw in the diagram. Line 40, 41, 42 are the most important for you to know because you need to provide your own details so the code will work. The first one is the Blink authentication code. When you register to the Blink uh, application on the Blink website, um, you will get in an email a special code. This is the place to provide that code. The second one is the Wi-Fi SSID, the Wi-Fi access point name at your home. And the last one is your Wi-Fi password. You must provide these three parameters so the code will work. Uh, next, we can see, for example, uh, some blink, blink command V0, V1, V2, V3, and V4. These are the virtual port in the Blink application, and we'll see it in a moment how we can set that. And uh, down here, we can see, for example, what will happen on each step, uh, tune right, fine tune right, tune left, fine tune left, and scan. And the difference between them is actually the speed of the stepper. And note that these numbers are related to my setup that I'm using the stepper motor with one by 30 seconds steps. If you're using a different setup or different speed, you can just change it, play with it to, to fit your own setup. So how to use this code? Uh, what you need to do is to upload this code to the uh, controller. The way to do that, it's just, you can just grab it, just copy the paste, uh, copy the, the, the code like that, or download the file, whatever is easy for you. And you need to open the Arduino IDE. The Arduino IDE, this is the software, you can download it free from the Arduino website. Just open it, paste the file, paste the code, like that, connect your computer using a USB to the microcontroller and use this button to upload the code to the microcontroller. 
Simple as that. The last piece in this setup is the application itself. The application will be installed on the cell phone and in this case I'm using the application that's called Blink. Blink is a free application uh, that contains lots of controllers inside it and it's uh, familiar with this controller as well. And as you saw in the code, there are special functions that are waiting for command from this application. And in the application itself, I can set up and create um, um, buttons and each button will send the command using Wi-Fi to the controller. Let me show you how that looks like. So now let's talk about the Blink application. You need to go to the uh, App Store, find Blink and install it. You will see this icon, the B1, and just open it. In my case, you see my project is already there, but you can create your own projects, of course. And what we see here is the buttons that I added, and you can recognize the name, the V0, V1, 2, and 3, and 4. These are the exact uh, pins that you saw in the code earlier. Let's see how a button is configured. I'm going to click on V0, for example. And you see that we, uh, we can see the name, the label of the uh, button, tune left in this case. And we see that the port is the V0 port. And we see that it can, we can choose if it will be a push or switch button. We can see the label, what will be the label if the button is not in use, and what will be the label if it's in use, tune and tuning. And we can change the size, color, and all of that. How we can add a new button? You see on the upper uh, right side, there is a tiny plus. You can click on it and you can add lots, lots, lots of widgets. Let's take the first one, the button. We have a new button here. Let's click on it. We'll give it a name. New button. And we can choose the pin. If we click on the pin, we can see on the left side, we can check not digital, not analog, but virtual. And on the right side, we see all the pins that are in use and we can find five that is free. Now we can give it um, a name. What will be um, the labels? Let's say A, if it's not in use and B, it, if it's in use. Let's leave it like that. Let's go back and we have a new button. To check that, we can go to the upper right corner and there's a tiny play button. Let's click on it and we have the new button. You see the A and if I will click on it, it changed to B. Let's stop the application and we can click on the V5 again, long press, and we can even change the size. Let's play and we have a bigger button that, we con that will control the V5 virtual port. Let's remove it. Let's stop the application. Click on the V5. Down here we have delete. Confirm. And that's it. And now if I go into play the application, you will see that this is my application. I have the scan, the tune left, tune right, and fine tune left, fine tune right, exactly as it fits to the code that we saw earlier. And this is my application. And that's it. I showed you a full solution, how you can control a stepper motor remotely using Wi-Fi from your cell phone. In my next video, I will show you how I built the magnetic loop antenna and how this piece working and connected inside the antenna. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you, and I will appreciate if you can like and subscribe. That's the best way uh, to support this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.